What's up guys, my name is Ahmad, this is Andrew Shu here today, and today we're watching three disturbing true hotel horror stories. I'm very interested, it's being my Mr. Nightmare with 5.82 million subscribers, bro. This man is an absolute monster of a creator. It's that big old subscribe button just like I am, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you, make sure you grab that notification button and turn it to all, just like that, my And let's hop straight into the video. A hostel is a form of low-cost, short-term lodging where guests share a multi-bed dormitory with a number of other people. Often the beds are in the form of bunk beds. These rooms can be single or mixed gender, and they can have private or shared bathrooms. Hostels are a common go-to for solo travelers who aren't looking to spend a lot of money on a hotel, or for people who only really plan on using the place to sleep and not really hang out. The three stories you're about to hear were recounted by solo travelers who stayed in hostels and had not so great experiences with the people they were sharing their rooms with. I was for a while talking to this French girl that I matched on some dating app after my breakup. We were texting for a while, then started calling and FaceTiming each other almost every night. We connected really well, but she came from a strict family who she still lived with. So when the idea of me visiting her came up, she made it clear she wouldn't be able to host me. And when I- Wee woo, wee woo, that's a red flag there. And that's, that's just how it is, boys. You don't ever want to be caught up in this situation. I have strict parents. I have shrink parents. Fuck out of here, bro. I'm not, I'm not, no. But in all seriousness, I do realize that some people have, you know, shrink parents and it's not always a red flag. But when you're stuck up in the house doing nothing but flicking your bean and watching SpongeBob, you know, you tend to get a little bit frustrated, maybe even a little bit angry. I asked if she'd want to share a hotel room together. She said not the first couple nights after we met, just because her parents would have a freak out. So since I was only 23 and my pockets weren't stuffed, I booked a stay at a hostel not far from her in Paris. So by the time I landed and then Ubered to the hostel, I was running on zero hours of sleep within the past 24 hours. I was exhausted. Due to the six hour time difference, it was also like three in the morning. I arrived to the hostel, which admittedly wasn't the nicest place ever. It was small. There was a certain odor to the lobby and the front desk worker wasn't too enthusiastic about his job. But it was 3 a.m. after all, so I had to cut him some slack. I walked to the room I'd be staying in, and there were six beds, five of them empty. But one had a guy sitting on it. He was on his laptop, typing away at something. He looked up at me, then back down at his laptop. I said, hey, but he didn't respond back. He seemed invested in what he was doing, so I just laid down in one of the empty beds. But the light to the room was still on. I asked him if it was okay that I shut off the light. Then he looked at me with a blank expression but didn't say anything. I repeated what I said assuming he didn't hear me, and he nodded his head with this weird smile. So I got up and turned off the lights to the room. I passed out pretty quickly. Bro, nah, I'm, I'm gonna tell you exactly how this went. Hey, do you mind if I turn off the light? That nigga weird as hell, bro. To the room. I passed out pretty quickly due to my lack of sleep, but surprisingly, I woke up a couple hours later. The room was still dark, but I didn't know for sure what woke me up. I rolled over to my side and looked around the room. It was almost pitch black, but I could see that all the beds were empty. All of them. Where was the other guy that was there earlier? The two bunk beds next to me were empty, top and bottom but I knew something had to have woken me up. I looked on my phone and it was five in the morning. I needed sleep, so I said, screw it. He probably left and maybe a sound from out in the hall woke me up. I lay back down on my side and closed my eyes. The mild traffic noises from outside was all that I heard. Then the bed shook a bit and on top of me, I saw a head peering over the edge of the top bunk, looking into the bottom bunk at me. I can see the same creepy smile on his face and his medium to longish black hair was drooping down with gravity below the top of his head as he hung upside down. It was a horrifying sight that words really can't explain. I screamed and fell off the bed as I realized what I was looking at. He sat up in the top bunk and continued looking at me. I screamed, what the F are you doing? As I threw something at him, he started to laugh this really strange off-putting laugh. I immediately turned the light on and went through my stuff to make sure nothing was stolen while watching him at the same time. 
I then heard a click of a phone camera and looked at him as he was uh, holding hell his phone nah, up to bro. me. Clearly hell having nah. just- Hell no, nah. hell no. Nah. <laughs> that shit was 110% jerk off material, bro. Yo dumbass went back to sleep. That nigga said. He was still laughing while looking at me. Something was wrong with this man. I didn't know if he had some screws loose mentally, or if he was doing this with bad intentions. I zipped up my bag and went to the front desk and requested a different room immediately. After explaining why and trying to get a reduced rate, he wouldn't budge. But he said he'd check on the room with the guest that I was just in. I didn't call the police because I didn't know if any laws were broken, but I sure as hell left a review of the hostel. Yeah, probably The rest not, of my trip there was good, shit. I had a good time with the girl I was seeing. But every time I returned to the hostel, I was scared I'd run into that guy. I don't like how a picture of me is on that weirdo's phone. I'm not a physical guy, but I wish in that instance, I did get physical. He would have liked that shit too. I'm a solo traveler. I've stayed in countless hostels as a means of saving money while also meeting new interesting people. I've stayed in a total of about 20 hostels in my life, and 90% of the time I've had good experiences. My first truly awful experience though was at a place called Freedom Traveler Hostel. The Freedom Traveler Hostel is located in Rome. It was my first time ever visiting Rome. I was completely inexperienced to the landscape and relied heavily on Google Maps and locals. In fact, even finding the hostel itself proved challenging as there were no signs for the place outside. But once I found the place, I let myself in through the big brown doors and was greeted by a nice woman working the front counter. I had already booked a stay in one of the four-person rooms. I was exhausted after a whole day of traveling. So after changing clothes and stowing my luggage under the bottom bunk bed, I laid down ready to take a quick power nap. Not long after, I heard a knock at the door and two young men walked in. They had thick Italian accents, I could tell right away. They greeted me and started talking to me, even though I was mid-nap. But I'm polite and social, so I was friendly and chatted with them. Better than me. They introduced themselves as Marco and Lucio, brothers. Marco had to be like 6'4", he was huge. Lucio was probably 5'11", but he wasn't a toothpick either, and I could see the resemblance in their faces. They were very tan, but both had receding hairlines, even <coughs> though I could tell they were in their early 20s. <laughs> After getting acquainted in English with them, the two brothers started to talk amongst themselves in Italian. They didn't know that I understood though, because right away I understood them to be talking about me and laughing at me. I heard I believe Marco describing me as some silly white boy. I could have said something right there in Italian, but instead I wanted to keep the illusion that I didn't speak the language. The two brothers eventually got up from their beds and left the room, with Lucio smiling and waving at me as they left. I just realized they didn't have their luggage in the room, which led me to believe they left their luggage in the storage shed in the garden area. I went to the garden area for a bit just to mingle with some of the people sitting out there, and I met a few nice tourists who were also staying there for the weekend. Then off I went to explore the city, heading in the direction of city center. After many hours and two food stops later, I returned to the hostel expecting some people to be socializing in the lounge area or in the back garden, but there was no one. So I figured I'd just get some early shut-eye. It was 9pm anyway. I don't remember when I fell asleep, but I remember waking up. The lights in the room were still off, but I heard whispering voices. The brothers were back. I didn't move. I listened to what they were saying. One of them whispered something that roughly translated to, Just grab it, or are you gonna do it? I didn't know what it meant, but I had a feeling they were talking about my luggage. I was waiting to hear the sound of my luggage being moved before I would let them know I was awake, but instead, I felt a sweet smelling cold and wet cloth being pressed up to my face and I reacted by yelling and swatting it off my face. I turned to see one of the brothers standing over me and I screamed, what are you doing? The man over me, I couldn't tell which one it was, then got on the lower bed with me and tried to subdue me, but I kicked him off and screamed for help. The other brother pulled him away from me and the two men took off out of the room. I quickly grabbed my bag and shoes and went to the front desk for help. The man who was working now said he saw the two guys leave, but there was no information on them even staying there. 
They were two random locals who were trying to rob visitors to the hostel. They tried to literally chloroform me. I didn't stay there after that, of course. I'm sure they've upped their security now, but when I stayed there, clearly anybody could have just walked right in. If I wasn't awake, I would have been chloroformed and robbed of my entire bag. After this, I started being more careful of the hostels I stay at. Thank you guys for watching the video. It's been a truly great time. I hope you be safe, make good decisions, and remember to be great. Peace!